Hey, you're here with Dr. Jody, and this is Anxiety. I'm so done with you. I am so excited about this podcast. It's an accompaniment to my book by the same name, Anxiety. I'm so done with you. It's a teen's guide to ditching toxic stress and hardwiring your brain for happiness. Because that is what we're going to do in this series. We're ditching that freaking toxic stress and hardwiring your brain to generate happiness every day. This is what you do. You read or listen to a section of the book, then come on over here and listen to an episode where we're going to go a little bit deeper, give more examples, and tell more stories. I want to give you everything you need to be sure that you find your way out of this horrible anxiety cycle so that you no longer have to suffer. Please leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. That'll help me get in the ears of more people who need this series. Mental health problems are skyrocketing, especially among teenagers, and this series is going to change the tide. Welcome, welcome. This is Chapter 1, Section 2, The Constant Digital Chatter. What you're going to learn in this episode is how your phone might be making you anxious. You'll learn about comparison culture, secondary trauma, and the role of commercialism. Let's get started. In chapter one, we're taking the mystery out of anxiety. And to do that, we have to look at all of the contexts that might be creating an increase of anxiety. This means we cannot leave out the increased use of cell phones in the last two decades. Of course we can't. Cell phones have defined your generation. The difference between a millennial and a Generation Z person is that Generation Z had cell phones connected to the internet from as early as middle school, which was about the same time that social media started. So you had a phone from a very young age and you developed it with that phone, which makes you distinctly different than any other generation. Listen, I'm not going to tell you in this episode that phones are evil. I love my phone, and I'm sure you love your phone too, and I'm quite positive you probably, like me, have a love-hate relationship with it. Am I right? Don't worry, I'm not going to suggest that you ditch your phone, and I realize that phones are not going away anytime soon. But maybe, maybe after you hear me out, and after you read this section, and after you listen to this episode, hopefully you will no longer be glued to it 24-7. I've studied this phenomenon for my doctoral thesis, and researchers have not yet identified the actual mechanisms that cause the phone to be making us anxious. But I'm going to share with you what I spoke about in my TEDx Wilmington talk and from what I've witnessed in the last two decades in my therapy practice. If you want to check out that TEDx Wilmington talk, you'll find it in the blog post that goes along with this podcast, and the link is in the show notes. Your phone gives you access to thousands of messages a day. Or more accurately, these messages have access to you. Texts, comments, likes, news, ads, calls. Well, maybe not calls. Who gets calls anymore? But practically 24-7, these messages are reaching you. How many of you sleep with your phones? Yeah, when I say 24-7, I'm barely speaking hyperbole. It's 24-7. These messages leave you feeling powerless, worthless, and out of control. Okay, I realize not all of these make you feel powerless, worthless, and out of control. You have some messages from your friends that are kind and thoughtful. You have some funny things that you're watching. You're entertained and you learn things sometimes. However, there are still way too many messages that do leave you thinking that you are powerless, worthless, and out of control. You're not. You're not powerless. You're not worthless. You're not out of control. But the messages are very convincing. And so we believe them. Yep, you're not the only ones. I feel them too. These messages trigger everybody's insecurities. So we're all having this problem together. And what's bad about those messages that leave you feeling powerless, worthless, and out of control is that those feelings make you anxious, angry, and depressed. In my thousands of conversations with people, I've identified three categories of these disempowering messages. One is, you are not enough. 
The second one is, the world is a dangerous place. And the third one is, you deserve cool stuff just because. Let's look at these. The first one is, you are not good enough. This is from comparison culture, which makes people turn to social media to help them define their worth. See, Western culture, also known as colonizing culture, has all of these unrealistic standards. You have to be smart, independent, pretty, rich, put together, sane, heterosexual, light-skinned, happy. Even though these are beyond ridiculous, people are desperate to meet these standards because we are biologically programmed to do whatever we have to do to belong. And we're encultured to believe that we have to meet these ridiculous and unrealistic expectations or we'll be left out. And we can't meet them all, all the time. We can barely meet some of them some of the time. At their worst, these expectations structurally and personally oppress people. And at their best, they have us comparing ourselves to people around us to make sure we're not the only loser who is inadequate. Unfortunately, in comparison culture, we will always feel inadequate. You are comparing someone else's outward public filtered appearance with your inside mess. You cannot win in this scenario. You will always find yourself not good enough. Social media plays into this comparison culture exponentially making it more powerful and oppressive. In fact, research has shown that the more time teenagers spend on social media, the worse they feel. And these were self-reports from teenagers. And when they take breaks, they said they almost immediately felt better. Let me say that again. When they took breaks from their phone, they almost immediately felt better. Let's look at that second category of message. The world is a dangerous place. You read in this book that secondary trauma is real and causes horrible consequences. We have a constant stream of horrible news coming into our hands in an instant. Even when you try to avoid it, there are messages coming from everywhere, so it's too hard to avoid. Seeing horrible things happen all around the world makes danger seem random and out of control, making you feel vulnerable. But it's only sometimes random and out of control. Also, your sympathetic nervous system is meant to trigger when you're present in danger and you could use the energy to do something to get yourself safe. But now you're watching tragedies very far away and there's nothing you could do about them but sit helplessly on your couch. That helplessness feeds the anxiety both biologically and emotionally. That last category of messages that I'm going to share with you in this episode is that you deserve stuff just because you're cool. I'm talking about the marketing messages that companies use to get you to buy their stuff. If you thought that you had to work hard to buy their products, sales would go down. They know this. So instead, their marketing plays on your insecurities making you connect getting things with your worth as a human being. Did you ever see a kid in a supermarket whose mom said no to some candy? They're screaming and crying as if no one loves them anymore. When you grow up with these messages that you deserve stuff just for being you, the pain of not getting it goes right into the core of your being. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. We don't get everything we want and it has nothing to do with what we deserve. But because the belief is so ingrained that we should get it, we're confused. Now, I know you're smarter than this, but this happens unconsciously and it affects you by making you feel worthless and powerless to do anything about it, increasing your anxiety and anger and depression. I'm telling you about all of these messages because when it happens unconsciously, You can't do anything about it. But once you know about them, you can do something about them. You could change the way you think about them and how they affect you. These messages strip you of your growth mindset and agency. Agency is that knowledge that you could respond to life by taking actions to make things happen that you want to happen. Attachment to the phone is akin to an addiction to consuming. The monkey mind gets attached to knowing all of the things. 
it tells you that you're protecting yourself by not missing anything and that something bad will happen if you did miss something. It has created a groove in your brain pathway, y'all. Luckily, you now know how to change it by overriding that pattern with your prefrontal cortex. You could laugh, you could have fun, you could create, and you could repeat over and over and over that you are powerful, worthy, and in control. You are not just a passive recipient of this life. You have the ability to act and respond in ways to make yourself better, make your mood better, and make your relationships better. So what do you think? Does your phone make you anxious? Did this episode inspire you to take a little break from your phone today? I hope so. If nothing else, maybe you could take it out of your bed or at least not look at it first thing in the morning. To help you practice taking a break from your phone, the what's in your hand activity in this section invites you to take a walk without it. I want you to connect back with thinking for yourself instead of having all of these messages have any kind of power over you. If you have a safe place to walk, please try that exercise. Plus, I have more resources on the blog post on how nature improves your mental health. Thank you so much for listening to this episode where we discuss how your phone could be making you anxious. Please share this. You never know who is suffering because anxiety and depression are invisible. Kindly leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts because that will be helping me help more people like you. Don't forget, you can find any resources that we discussed in this episode on the blog post. The link is in the show notes. The next episode is chapter one, section three, the hellish symptoms. In that episode, we're going to continue to demystify anxiety so you feel safer, build confidence in your abilities, and get rid of it. Read that section and then come on back and listen to the next episode. I'll meet you there.